Yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. Beauty. Good evening, everybody. You join us here at the beautiful Barston Lake. And although it might look like summer now, winter is coming. We've got Darren Cox on the box today, catching a few skimmers for us. And we're at Barston because it is the final of the Angling Trust 2023 Silver Fisherman. Darren, when do you kick off your silverfish fishing for the year then? What's your usual venues? What do you like doing? I tend to spend a lot of my time at places like Barston and, and Netherlands. Um, I like to follow a little circuit, you know, there's, there's, there's the Angling Trust Silvers, um, which is a great, absolutely great event. There's two or three others. I run a winter league at Meadowlands, which is you get, it's great. It gives you some consistency. You know, going fishing most weekends, doing the same thing. Always mega popular as well, isn't it? There's, uh, really there's yeah. a few famous faces on there. Your likes of Cam and Sean. There's a good, good quality of angler on that one, isn't there? I think there's about, <laughs> it works out about 15 current or former internationals, England internationals, and the Welsh internationals. And Stunning. Scottish. Yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing. It's a great, great venue, but winter fishing is just great. It gets your bites. Yeah, yeah, you know, it gets. I know we sat here in the sunshine, but you know, you're getting going to get cold soon. And come, come the end of September, winter leagues start, and um, everyone starts thinking about putting a fleece on. That's um, when you get that first frost. That's when you want to be uh, thinking about fishing for silver, isn't it? You know, to get some consistency of bite. Yeah, it's lovely. It's it's. And that's something I've really strived to do with this year's Silverfish event is pick venues where people are going to go out and catch a few fish. Um, you know, all, all your usual players, we've got Medlands and Barston, but also a couple of couple of new venues. Um, Monk, Monk Lakes down in the south, Robbie Taylor's kindly offered to run one down there for me. Great venue, yeah. They have a nice little circuit there, so I know quite a few of the lads have fished there. Yeah, it was. Fantastic fishing, it? Yeah, yeah, fantastic fishing, and there was a few requests for it last year, so we thought we'd uh, we'd give one a try down there. And um, my old mate Graham West Westy has has put one on St Albans Lakes for us as well. I sorted one out on there, which looks a stunning new venue for for silvers. Obviously, it's had its carp heritage for some time, but um, I've seen some of them weights that he's been putting in on the midweekers, and it's. Uh, yeah, it's quite the venue as well. They're quite big waters as well that you've chosen, which is nice, because I always find in winter that um, if you've got open water, you've always got a chance of finding the fish. You know, you don't need to sit there and fish the all the time. You can fish a feeder. You can shut waggles up at these places and stuff like that. And, you know, there's you've got a really good chance at some point of, of having a really good visit to some, some fish, you know. That's it. And, and the biggest one of them is probably Bollington Reservoir that I'll put another one back on this year, which is... Full huge, ropes, isn't it? huge expanse of water and an insane amount of ropes. You know, Big there's been well there, yeah, there's been some 50, 60 pounds this summer, and we've put one on nice and early this year. So, fingers crossed, the weather will behave itself so we can present properly there. And um, yeah, we'll see some proper bags of ropes, a little bit different from the the general skimmer theme that you see from most commercial style venues in the winter. Yeah, I mean, the skimmers are just flourishing in these venues aren't they? Just oh they love it. Pellets, you know the carp hangers feed pellets and stick mixes and you know they put so much bait in but and even the carp, uh, the match fishermen, the commercial match fishermen yeah. in, in summer, most aren't tied to these skimmers so it, it, they just get a, they get a proper rest and, you know they have a good feed in, That's it. in summer and um Come winter, they're just great. They're so reliable. It's giving us such reliable fish to catch in winter. That's it. We, we've, we've been through the ice here at Barston before and people have yeah. caught skimmers. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's set to be a very good final, fingers crossed. 
Looking forward to it. Looking forward Hope to it. Hope we get there. Yeah, same. <laughs> for winter silvers on you know these sort of skimmery ropesy style venues what would they be um, first one is give the fish a bit of respect in terms of um, don't think because it's rammed full of fish that you can still go and catch some big up to an heavy line you will mm. you will but you will consistently catch better if you just find down a little bit yeah you know, that's that's probably what might most important to both of people. Uh, and just balance your gear. Yeah. You know, if you're fishing like lines and small hooks, then go down on, on, on your elastics. What have you got on today? I've basically, well today I'm fishing a 16 and 14 hooks because it's nice and warm, I know. Yes. But I wouldn't hesitate in winter, even on pellet or on casters, to go down to, you know, 18 and 20 hooks. Yeah. Oh, 09 or 10 line. But obviously you've got to balance it up with the with a, a much softer elastic. So I use a 1.2 um, and 1.5 metre hollow elastic. Yeah. Um, and they just balance everything up. Give the fish some respect. Like it. Like um, it. Tip number two, um, I would say set your, set your pegs up um, carefully. Don't go mad with bait, but, but feed a few lines. Try and understand what depth of water the fish are feeding in. You know, even in winter you can, you can find a, a short shelf that is four, three or four foot shallower than um, the main part of the lake. And you can catch a lot of fish off it. Yeah. It's one of those things with silverfishing is if you, if you set two or three lines up, if you can get, I always say, you can get two lines working, whatever the bait, Whatever you can get to that line of work, you can work your swim and you can get the most out of your fine hands. You've got something to fall back on, haven't you, exactly, at that point? Yeah. No, I like it. I like that one a lot. And the um and the final final tip, I will let you maybe get that skimmer in first. Another yeah. what, six ounce of there probably? Yeah, six, seven ounce, you yeah. know. Well, Build a weight they do, don't they? Pounds, uh, which is good. Um probably my the most important tip is whether you fishing pellets, casters, worms, feeder fishing, whole fishing, whatever. Mm. It's just bait wise. If you if you dump it up, you rarely get any result. But if you just trickle your bait in, yes. you know, I've got a little pot on the end of my pole today, that's the kind of thing you do a lot. But what what I'll do is I've one line where I might just put a little bit of bait in like this. Yeah. I'll have another line where I bring a few casters in and just, just like cover the bases on the way you feed them. If they are sat on the bottom, not moving, then like, you want to get some bait down, maybe a bit of chop work, and a bit of caster in a bit of ground, a bit of bark, a bit of bait. Mm. But on another part of the swing, you might catch on casters, just need to feed the casters all day. And it's just covering the bases again. Um, we're not going mad on feet. Don't think you can tickle a load of bait. In. No. You don't need masses of bait. No. Especially with pellet fishing. Mm. You know, you, you can pellet fish at these venues, and literally, you can you can use a quarter of a pint of micros yeah. and your hook bait. Yeah. Which yeah. Is even less. Um, you know, some days you need to put a lot of bait in, mm. but it, it's always best to, to feed to. The response that the fish gives you rather than trying to force them to eat. Yeah, find out what they want on the day in terms of hook bite wise that they want to eat and, and what sort of feeding patterns get you your best responses, isn't yeah. it, at the end of the day? Can I give you a fourth tip? Go on, yeah, give us a fourth. Bonus. Yeah. I'm a big believer in, in keeping my eye on the temperature yes. of the water and yeah. the, the air pressure in winter. I think it's so important. And it's, um, it, it literally is a barometer, it gives you a good barometer of how the fish are going to feed. Mm. So it, I always hear on the side of course you've got really high pressure or if you've had um, a sudden bad frost. A bad, one bad frost can really cause a lot of damage to the fishing. Mm. Several frosts in a row, the fish get used to it. Yeah, but, for sure. You know, um, if you get that one bad one out of the blue, that will really um, hurt the fishing. So I'd, to I'd, respond to that, mm. I would slow down on hours. Feed a put in, not expect to catch straight away. Might be wind away, the better fish feed well in the, the same time of day, you know, after lunchtime, one, two o'clock, and as the match is drawn to a close. That's when you've got to be ready to make the most of your peg. 
had that exact thing at Medlands last year actually was hard frost and we're on the on the draw on the Warren Pool, obviously really shallow on that lake compared to compared to the lambs down and yeah. took it really steady, hardly put any loose bait or loose feed on my ground bait, sorry, and managed to eke out I think it was fifteen pound of skimmers and they only came in the last two hours. You know, they they weren't they didn't really want to feed early doors, had the odd the odd fish, but then they came on nice and strong late and that was enough. But it was it didn't destroy your peg, did didn't, it? No, no That's exactly. Your peg was ready to accept fish to feed by the time you wanted to feed. And, and if you if you look after your peg, often your peg will look after you later in the match. Definitely. Awesome. So Darren, with the final coming up on Barston in early March, if you only had to fish two lines, or what two lines would do the most damage in the final, which two do you think they'll be? Well, it's, firstly, I think it's a great time to have the final. Mm. It's, it's, it's prime time, you know, coming out of winter, things are just starting to wake up, whilst temperatures are getting a bit better. So there'll be fish, unless it's ridiculously cold, you have freak, you know, cold spelling, in March, mm. normally the fish start to wake up. When they wake up, they want to eat and start moving about. So, if it, if if I only had to fish two lines, mm. one line would be a ground bait feeder, fished at about. Oh, that was my main car. Right? <laughs> yeah, they might have started to move in. But small ground bait feeder, fished probably at about 25 meters mm -hmm. average yeah like, depending on where you are and wind um, and that kind of stuff with not a lot of bait in it just you know suck in see mm. see how you get response you can get a few bites try and catch some of these smaller skimmers on it and hopefully the, the best skimmers will move in but i would always 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 put a pole line in yeah and that i'd you said one, uh, uh, two methods or, or two lines. Mm. The pole line would be dependent on the weather. Yeah. So the colder and stiller it is, the further I would fish out. Yeah. So if you could get away with fishing 16 metres because it's a flat calm day, mm -hmm. then I would probably do that because I think that would catch me more fish. Um, a few extra then bonus ones maybe as well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. But if it's if it's blowing a hooligan, towing like mad. Yeah, which you can do at Barston. A lot, a lot. Then a, it's great conditions to catch fish mm. because they're generally moving. And b, it's very difficult to fish 16 meters or even sometimes 13 meters at this place when it's going blowing a hooligan. Yeah. So it's it. That, there's the two lines. The yeah. pole line is dependent on the weather. Yeah, I like that. Like that. That's uh, and that's important, isn't it? Because you've got to you've got to assess your swim a little bit on you've the day. Got to and to the conditions, you really have. I mean, I don't like um, people saying, "Oh, I'm definitely going to do this next week." Mm -hmm. Not one of my pet hates. I say, and I also say to them, "Well, what what's the weather like next week? How windy is it going to be? I don't know. I don't know." Well, as you know, you can do that. One, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You've got to be. It's got to be a boy scout prepared for everything. Yeah. And, you know, agreed. Changes, even down to practicing. People practice. And they pra people come from the north, south, all around. They, 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 they do things that suit their styles. That's, yeah, yeah. And they can come and clean up if you don't know what's going on because, you know, they find a, a method that suits them and they obviously suits the fish in the, the, um, the lake. So just be mindful when you're pleasure fishing, you know, practicing. Um, before, what others are doing and how they're, how they're catching yeah. yeah and I'll, I'll ask you one more bonus question as well actually another bonus, another bonus. Um, we like bonuses um, on the final assuming it's sort of pretty steady winter conditions let's say you know four five six degrees overnight and you know like ten degrees in the day that sort of, them sort of conditions, pretty stable. What weight do you think we could potentially do it from Barston? I think you'd be looking. How many is in the final? So there'll be. It depends a little bit on numbers of tickets sold, because some of them will be thirty and some of them will be forty-five peggers. But it will be around mid thirties. So you'll have yeah. you'll have a bit of space. So you'll have lots of space. Yeah. yeah. I I mean I would expect that you you would need if it's mild, but if temperatures like that. Could easily, easily need upwards of fifty pounds. 
Yeah. Easily. Um, if the weather's been constant. You know, if, if these fish come on a line, mm. these skimmers like this, yeah. they you just don't want to chew it. That's it. Which is what you soon have. build away, yeah. You want to chew it, and this happens in winter. Yeah. Um, all, all that happens is you just feed it a little bit less to start with because you don't know what's there. Mm. But once you get a fish there, you're almost feeding it like it is. Like it's summer, you give him a debate and say, respond to it. That's it. Um, so, 70 pounds? For yeah, I, 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 if it stays nice conditions, it's it's pretty sensible. Um, and, you know, right anglers get on the right pegs. I could easily see the, the sort of silverfish final record going. And like you say, 70, 80 pound could be on the cards if them if them right stamp fish rock up and somebody yeah. gets their head down on them. It was happening in some of the matches last year. There was 70 pound being caught in yeah. temperatures where you thought, wow, what's happening here? But these, these fish are at a... These skimmers, you know, you know, there are bigger skimmers in here, but mm. these skimmers are a size whereby they're almost constantly feeding. Yeah. And and they respond, skimmers respond well in cold. That's it. They're, they're the ones that, you know, they tend to oblige most days. You know, they don't necessarily feed every day. Mm. Uh, all day, but they do feed every day. Yeah. Um, no matter what the temperature is. Like it. No, I, I'm uh, certainly really hopeful. Of, uh, of getting to the final this year. I've missed out last year, but um, fingers crossed, I can get on a half decent peg. And I'll, I'll let you come along to the final as well, Darren. And, uh, nice. and we could be one and two, eh? Yeah, sounds good to me. <laughs> good stuff. Fantastic few hours here at Barston. What a venue this is. The perfect place for the final for the Silfish 2023 and by Angling Trust. Tickets are on sale now. So if you want them, head over to the link below and get on it. It's going to be a sellout. It's fantastic. <laughs>